All right, we're back. It's been a while. A lot longer than I thought. But, uh, been having a crisis of faith, been tested, and now I'm back. But that's a, uh, a subject for another time. Tonight, I've uh, ran across a couple of articles and uh, been doing some thinking. And uh, it's, it has to deal with a question we all have what is it that we want out of our life what is it that we uh um you know want to do when we grow up as we are uh, in our teen years and uh what the current generation and probably the last couple generations uh want out of life is very very uh sad we'll put it that way so let's get started here i've got a couple articles this one is from a documentary that's going to be uh, presented on, I believe it's CBS? Yeah, CBS Reports, and it's called Chasing Fame. And as you can guess by now, that's what a lot of these kids want. They just want to be famous. Um, now, like I said, this is an article, so I'm not re releasing any information that's not already out there, but uh, Jiggy Turner is the most famous person in West Virginia, or at least he thinks he is. Quote, I mean, social media-wise, I'm the most famous, he said, but there's Steve Harvey. He's pretty famous, too. Now, the 16-year-old says here, next paragraph, at 16, uh, Turner amassed over 600,000 followers on social media platform, uh, TikTok. So at 16, he is comparing himself to Steve Harvey, who's been working on his career for the last, what, 40, 50 years, something of that nature. Now, I'm not a big Steve Harvey fan myself, but he has a certain amount of notoriety. He's hosted television shows, been in movies, did comedy. I mean, this man has worked hard. And how we have a 16-year-old who's comparing himself to Steve Harvey. Let that soak in, you know, for just a little bit. You serious? Yeah, I'm afraid he is. He's very serious about this. As the uh, as we sort of continue here, and it's and that's just in the last two years. His sudden popularity on the app has led him to lucrative brand deals and opportunities to act on screen. By all accounts, Turner is living the dream. Quote: Every kid wants to be famous. He joked. Who wants to work a nine to five? Now, that's very disturbing in itself because think about it. He's looking down on people that work a nine to five style job. And that would, I'm assuming, include his parents. That nine to five job jiggy is what's made it possible for you to live the life that you have. That nine to five job created TikTok. Okay, I know it's a Chinese company, but you get the point. All those nine to five people is what's made your life possible. And now he's got an attitude that eh, somehow he's better off than they are. Or he's just better than they are. I'm sure he's better off if he's got uh, lucrative brand deals and opportunities to, uh, to do some acting on screen. But just think of this entitlement that this young person has. You know? S looking down on the working people. Oh, who wants to do that? What's wrong with that? That's what's provided for you all this time. But he's not the only one. There's others. Uh, 
Turner is a part of a growing wave of teen influencers ensuing traditional career paths in favor of a chance at celebrity. In a recent survey, 54% of Generation Z said they'd like to become an influencer, and 86% expressed interest in posting social media content for money. Now, granted, I understand that I am posting, you know, social media content uh, by doing a podcast. But I will have to say, I do it to bring up points like this. Because these things just get in my brain and eat away at it if I don't let it out. This is absurd. Absolutely absurd. What is his parents doing? You know, it's, it's, it's how are, they've got to be feeding this. Because he doesn't sound like he's very humble, shall we say, at all. I'll continue a little bit more. Uh, but lawmakers across the country are concerned that popular social media apps could be creating a mental health crisis for America's youth. In his State of the Union, President Biden referred to Big Tech's national experiment on children. In March, a bipartisan group of state attorney generals launched an investigation into TikTok's impact on kids and say teens as a part of a consumer protection initiative. I think I read that right. In the latest expanse, expansion of the effort to enact greater protection for kids online. Now, I forgot to get the, uh, there's an article on TikTok in China. TikTok in China is completely different than TikTok here in the United States and other parts of the world. TikTok in China is limited to a couple hours a night. And what they show on the TikTok in China is educational videos. How to improve one's mind. How to have math skills, science skills. Not who can dance like a panda to the latest song that they just happened to uh, release on TikTok. Okay, they're educating their children. Let that sink in. A little bit more here. Quote, as children and teens already grapple with issues of anxiety, social pressures, and depression. This is making me depressed. We cannot allow social media to further harm their physical health and mental well-being, said a Massachusetts attorney general. Uh, Maria Healy, one of the AGs leading in the investigation. So now, at least it sounds like the AGs. Excuse me. Like I said, I don't quite have my voice there. Sounds like people are aware of it in the government. That doesn't give me much faith in the government and their ability to uh, handle things. But uh, they know what's going on. And they are worried, shall I say. Uh, I am too. I am too. Because he's not the only one. He's not the only one there. So now, my question on this is, what happens when they become adults? What is it that happens to a brain like that when you get older and you become an adult. Well, here's that answer. YouTuber who jumped from a plane caused it to crash in order to record video of it, FAA says. Uh, the FAA said that it was revoking Trevor Jacobs' private pilot certificate and that he chose to jump out of a plane, quote, solely so you could record the footage of the crash. Now, 
this is this is some of the footage that you're seeing right here look at this multiple angles and what did he put right here i crashed my plane okay it looks like he's definitely trying to crash his plane there he goes and second angle and he'll come up here in a minute uh basically he filmed it all the way down so now this is what happens to <laughs> the generation that grows up seeking all this attention and validation from social media i'll read a little bit of this one a youtuber who parachuted from a small plane over California's mountains last year after claiming engine trouble. Now, does, does this look like engine trouble? Engine's still working. Propeller's still spinning. Ah, there it goes. Now, it's... I've had a, a student pilot's license. My father was a pilot. And I can tell you what you would do in a situation like that, even though I haven't flown in years, is that you have what's called a glide path. Okay, You look for roads. You look for long areas that you can... Oh, here he goes. Hold on. He's uh, filming the plane and himself as he jammed out of the plane. Okay. Think about that. So anyways, you will look for areas to land because you don't want to crash your plane. This was his plane. He owned it. But for some reason in his mind, it was more important to get a YouTube video so that he could get likes and he can get views. Now, uh, who is it? I was trying to remember who this is. Um, Jacob, in it, Jacob, the pilot and sole occupant is flying a single engine plane. When the video appears to show the propeller stop spinning, Jacob make his comment, several of which are bleeped, including one about the engine being out. Then the door, oh, he, the, he then opens the door and jumps from the plane, recording himself falling and using a parachute. Cameras attached to the now empty aircraft show it crashing into the mountains. Jacob did not immediately respond to messages sent to an email address attached to the YouTube page later Wednesday, later Wednesday, or to messages sent to what appears to be his Instagram account and to his website that appears to be related to him. All right. Now, You know, this guy's name is Trevor Jacob. He's a private pilot. He's licensed, okay, which has now been revoked. And what did Trevor used to do? He was trying out for the Olympics. It says here, he competed for Team USA in snowboarding at the 2014 Winter Olympics in Sochi, Russia and came in ninth place in men's snowboard cross. Okay, so, and just before that, Jacob has advertised himself on his YouTube channel as an adventurer and an Olympic athlete and founder of an adventure-themed website. All right, so here is a guy that was trying out for the U.S. Olympic teams, didn't make it to the big show. Okay, so that probably gave him a real big letdown. He's used to being seen on television to some extent. He's in, came in ninth place. He's had some accolades. He's had people who probably notice him. And then what happens as that notoriety wears off? Where is it that he's going to get his next dopamine you know, fix from all this. So he starts an, an adventure-themed website. And when that is not getting as much of attention and he needs more attention, then what's he got to do? 
well, he's got to amp up his whole gig, right? He just has to go to the next level and the next level. Where does it stop? When is it enough? He's, in my opinion, not right in the head. In one way, I don't blame him because he's brought up in this social media circus that we have and he is addicted just like the other 16 year olds will be the other you know tiktokers that are out there what happens when you're no longer cute and people stop watching you i mean that's the reality of it you know fame they talk about your 15 minutes of fame and when that's over that's over there's no sustaining, there's no sustainability to any of this social media phenomena, I guess you can call it. Addiction is more what it's like. It does, it's not sustainable. But yet, these kids are going after that. Instead of a 9 to 5 to where you could make a good honest living, it's sustainable over time, depending on what you get into, right? Right? I know not all jobs, especially uh, in the last past couple of years, we found out just how vulnerable a lot of these jobs are. But this is what they are choosing, right? I remember back in the uh, 80s and 90s, everybody wanted to be a rap star, you know? Everybody wanted to have that hit album and that was going to be it. Some of the rap artists made it and the rest of them had to get a regular job. And nobody is telling these kids, hey, yeah, do this, but also work on having a second fallback position. Because when they're in their 20s and it starts to taper off, then what? Okay, then what? You're going to sit on mommy's and daddy's couch? What's going to happen after that point? Now, the guy with the airplane, he was fortunate that nobody got hurt. I mean, that is a very real possibility. Okay, he was lucky. As even he planned, let's just say he planned the whole thing. You still can't plan where that plane is going to go down. You can't plan who might have been in that area. Maybe there's some hikers, some campers. You don't know. But to him, it was a, yeah, an acceptable risk. I'm going to get some really cool views on this. I I don't understand it. it. It makes my head want to explode. It really, really does. It's just amazing to me. All right. That's all I got for right now. So everybody have a good weekend. I'll get this out there. I put uh, links in the description and uh, you can go check out the stories yourself. Uh, let me know what you all think. Let me know in the comments. What do you think about this? And do you know anybody who does this kind of crap? And what's the solution? I would hope to is be, uh, you know, natural selection. They'll take themselves out, but it doesn't seem like it. Uh, you know, this guy was thoughtful enough to have a parachute. Don't get me wrong on that. All right, everyone, have a good evening. Look up and uh, be careful out there. You don't know who's uh, going to be the next person coming at you. Later. Later.